Hi, welcome to this talk on why and how to create a custom Debian image from recipes. My name is Francois Duga. I'm a software engineer at ETEL in the Internet of Things group. Internet of Things today is present in a variety of industries. Industrial automation, manufacturing, automotive, retail, healthcare, and so on. The use cases are very different and so are the expectations from an IoT platform. Logically, the requirements on hardware are domain-specific. They rely on silicon features, which must be enabled at platform level. That is for real-time compute and communication, workload consolidation, security and functional safety, orchestration, infrastructure management, and so on. A lot of custom software is required to do so. That can be a specific Linux kernel to enable a driver for, let's say, time-sensitive networking. That also requires some modification in user space to enable those protocols. We might also want to add uh, custom code and example applications to show how to use the platform. Also, we might also need to integrate third-party software. This is why domain-specific reference software platforms are needed. From traditional IoT, we have very good experience and knowledge of the Yocto project, especially for embedded devices. Yocto, it's not an embedded Linux distribution, it creates a custom one for you. That provides absolute flexibility but this comes at the price of simplicity, and it might not be required when building a, a reference software platform. Moreover, users might already be used to a, an existing Linux distribution and probably do not want to switch. So today we'll be exploring an alternative, that is customizing a general purpose Linux distribution instead of creating a new one. Most of the software in our reference platforms is free and open source software that's already available in, in Linux distributions. Our customizations represent only a fraction of the overall binaries that are running on the system. So why should we rebuild everything? Okay, so we take a Linux distribution. What's the best way to customize it in a structured way, but with minimal effort? So what are we aiming at? Of course, we want to provide high quality software with focus on stability and maturity. We don't want to, uh, users to have to learn about the specific distribution. Instead, we assume they're already familiar with one or more and we want to leverage their experience so that they can get the systems up and running as fast as possible. Out-of-the-box experience is the key here. We also base this approach on free and open source software. We need absolute clarity on licensing, especially for redistribution. Also using an existing and neutral third-party integration process helps us streamline integration from proven best practices. By focusing on one distribution, we can also reduce time to market by integrating software in a, in a common target among industries. If the software has already been integrated before for another reference platform, we can just take it and integrate it into our platform. As mentioned earlier, in traditional IoT and embedded systems, we come from Yocto projects. And we cannot start from scratch. We don't just have the layers and the recipes, we also have the mindset, and that needs to be taken into account. Finally, we don't want users to have to rebuild and deploy a complete image when they just want to install software they already know. Instead, we want to provide access to a huge existing software catalog. So you probably saw that coming. Debian is a natural choice for what we want to do here. Let's have a look at the Yocto project build flow. So here, source code is represented at the top. On the left is other inputs such as metadata and that includes recipes. Those recipes describe how to, how to fetch the code, configure and build the packages using auto tools, CMake, or anything else. Intermediate packages are built and they are in turn integrated to generate a root file system image in the end. The Yocto project provides a, a, a reference distribution which is called Pocky. So the build flow we just went through, very high level, mostly relies on a central tool which is called BitBake. And BitBake is the task scheduler and executor that's used by the, the Yocto build system. It resolves dependencies and, and will create a list of tasks that need to be executed to go from all the sources to a complete full file system image binary in the end. BitBake is part of the Yocto project, but it can be used in a different context. Let me introduce Iser. Iser is a set of scripts to build Debian packages and Debian-based images from recipes using BitBake. Thanks to BitBake, it provides full flexibility to, custom, to customize packages as well as the complete file system. And because we use recipes and layers, it's very easy to keep a very structured project. 
ISA does not reinvent the wheel. So for packaging, it actually uh, leverages the standard Debian tools, such as the DPKG suite and, and the bootstrap. They're integrated in the big build process and for each packages that needs to be built. Other packages, which, which can be just used as they already are on the Debian repositories, will just be pulled from there. And that means the build is actually extremely fast, as we will see later. ISA is free software. Uh, it was presented here at DebCon four years ago by its creators. Kudos to them. ISA has helped my organization, and I want to show you today how it can be used. In the next 10 minutes or so, we'll go over some of the examples, showing how to use ISA in key situations. I will not be providing uh, information on how things work internally, and instead we will have a very pragmatic approach with the hope that some of the examples here can be used as is or adapted to your needs. We'll be using a virtual machine rather than a physical target to save the, the, deployment, the deployment time and focus on one environment. Okay, so what we need here? So we need a build machine, an environment. It's good to know that the complete environment can be containerized. Of course, knowledge on standard build tools and Debian packaging is, is helpful here. So first things, first things first, let's start with the base, a minimal Debian image. So ISA comes as a template, and here we do not modify it, we will just build the default image. The first step after cloning is to initialize the build environment by sourcing a script. Once this is done, the bitbake command becomes available and can be used to build predefined targets. Bitbake will execute all the tasks required to build each package and finally assemble the, the Debian-based uh, image. That takes only a few minutes because we are pulling most of the packages. Here also a couple of examples provided by ISA will be compiled and built from scratch and also integrated in the image. And finally, we use a script that we call QMU to run a virtual, a virtual machine. And that's what's used here to see the prompt that you can see at the bottom. Well, we do not need ISA for this. So let's have a look at customization examples. Here we'd be adding a package which is not part of Debian. Of course, the first step is to add packaging. That means creating a Debian directory, the control file, the rules file, the changelog, and so on, patching the sources, identifying a maintainer, and this packaging is key. So it's not shown here because this work has already been done for the, for the software components we are integrating, which is a, um, a graphics compositor based on Western. It's already available there with the Debian directory, so we can just take it as is. So to build with Bitbake, we we'll actually need to create a minimal recipe to wrap, to wrap the build. And as you can see, this is mostly pointers to the Git repository and a specific version. Also, we need to update the image configuration to instruct Bitbake to include this package in the final image. Then we call Bitbake, run the image again, and as you can see, the binary is there. Okay, that was easy. We have full flexibility to change the, the source code here. So what we actually prefer to change, uh, to modify a package that is already part of Debian. So we'll be using hello, which is a simple package that's, that's part of Debian and that displays a greeting message. So we start by creating a patch file, which will uh, change the greetings message that is hard coded in the source code. And here we'll be displaying um, hello debconf21 instead of the um, hello world. Actually, that's not shown here. We also need to patch the, the test file because during our build, the test, of course, will be executed. And in that case, the test checks the greetings message. So that needs to be, to be done too. Okay, the next step is to include this patch in the, in the build process. And there's more than one way to do it. And what we're doing here is to add a step in the bitback recipe and to use Quilt to patch the source. We can rebuild and run, and our binaries will show our um, customized greeting message. Okay, in this next example, we'll see how to update the version of a Debian package. So this is a, this package is ACPICA ACPI tool, sorry, and that's already part of the Debian buster, but we need it in a more recent version. So again, there's more than one way to do it. We could enable backports or testing, but here what we choose to do is uh, to use Salsa and the source and build that from scratch. So just like before, we create a minimum recipes to wrap the Debian build package. And yeah, it looks very similar, except we're actually uh, using uh, a specific Git revision. We can build, run it, and see that uh, the version matches the, the Git revision we were, we were using. And another example of adding a new package, I will not go into details because it looks very similar to before. Uh, one difference though, so here we are building the Acorn hypervisor. And 
it depends on ACPIC tool, uh, ACPICA tool, sorry, uh, a version that is more recent than the one that is provided in Debian Buster. So this dependency is already present in the control file, but what we need to do here as well is to tell BitBake about this dependency so that during the build, BitBake knows it has to build the dependency first, install it into the image before we're able to, to compile and build ACORN here. That's done with this variable with the, the depends and okay, we can build uh, run bitbake to build and to run our image again and the binary is there. A very important example is how to uh, use a custom Linux kernel version and that's extremely simple. So here we are using the CIP, so the Civil, Civil Infrastructure Platform uh, kernel. That, uh, that's one example that's already pre-integrated in, in ISA. Other examples include uh, building the mainline kernel, but in any case, it's quite straightforward. Uh, it's just a GitHub URL, specific revision, and maybe even a custom uh, dev config file. So have a look at the directory with the recipes to change that. It's quite straightforward. One final example here, instead of building a root file system image, we actually pack user space into a container image. So to do so, the great thing, we don't need to touch any of our uh, recipes. We just set some variables to tell BitBake that our target is not a root file system image, it's actually a container image and a Docker archive in particular in this case. So we run the same command as before and the tarball is created with a container image. This tarball needs to be deployed on the image and there uh, on our target we can actually install Docker because we have access to the um, Debian repositories to pull packages with apt. Once this is done, we can load the image with Docker load and uh, from, from that image, we can instantiate a container and run our uh, custom hello here and see the greetings message. So important to know here, we didn't touch any recipe and from the, the, the same recipes, we're actually able to build either um, a complete root file system image that can be run in a virtual machine or pack the binaries in a container image for microservice architectures, for example. Going further, well, I recommend uh, checking the ISA user manual that will give more detail on um, how things work under the hood. It also provides more example of uh, packaging custom software, um, third party binaries, for example, or maybe um, code that doesn't come with the, the Debian packaging metadata and ISA provides some helpers to generate the required files on the fly. And of course, uh, have a look at the Big Bake user manual, manual to understand a bit more about the, the concepts involved in the build process and to create your own recipes. So our integration process used to look like that. We, we had our you know, custom software built with any build tools. Then we, 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 we added a lot of information in the recipe to, to, to provide information for the packaging. So that is fetching the code, patching it, uh, using custom build tools or anything. And then this recipe was used with many others to actually assemble the, the root file system image based on, on your topoki or, or even a custom distribution. So now the packaging actually takes place ahead of that. So when creating the, the rules and then the, the control file and everything else that's required for Debian packaging, we provide most of the information so that as we saw in the examples, the, the, the big bake recipe is merely a wrapper around this, this uh, package build. And then, of course, we use ISA to build the image and to create a Debian-based uh, root file system in the end. So the packaging also, the packaging information now uh, has moved and we can actually add it uh, in our uh, repositories with the custom software. And we can actually get uh, the teams that deliver software to take ownership of this packaging information so that they, they maintain um, they maintain the files when going, uh, you know, with, with new version. And that means that there's a shift of responsibility that makes integration in multiple targets much easier. Of course, once we have packaged the software for Debian, we can uh, use it to build it with recipes and ISA to create a, a Debian based uh, image. But we, we don't even need ISA here. We can also build Debian images uh, directly from the, sorry, Debian packages directly from, from this metadata or we can even upstream those metadata together with the code, as I was mentioning earlier. And that brings us one step closer to Debian integration. In conclusion, creating a custom Debian image from recipes is straightforward. So it's, uh, of course, it's a new mindset required for us, but it works and it's relatively simple. 
either structures the build and, and you know, the software platform with low effort. Uh, it's a great tool. We didn't have to modify it. Uh, there were no roadblocks and we were able to bring customizations in a very structured way so that we didn't have to, you know, create technical debt because of all the, the, the customization. Building only custom software helps focus on increasing value add. So it's probably the most important point here. Previously, our custom software was diluted in a huge software stack that was built from scratch. And now the build is only a fraction of what it was before. So that is in terms of number of packages that are built, or uh, even the build duration is down to a few minutes only, or even the amount of, line of lines of code that are required to, to build the software. So in that case, the recipe. And we can focus on our custom software only, and for the rest, we rely on existing Debian. ISA helps a smooth transition to the Debian mindset. So as we are getting more familiar with this process, we can streamline the Debian packaging and actually we already started upstreaming some of the, the Debian rules together with, um, with software we distribute. So what's next for us? We will continue this journey on, on getting closer to Debian. And for you, well, if you face a similar situation in your uh, project organization, I, I really suggest you have a look at ISA. All right, thank you very much for attending my presentation and now it's time for questions. Okay, thank you Francois for the interesting talk. Uh, we do have a few questions. Uh, let's get on to the first one. Uh, did you consider FAI? If yes, why didn't you use that? Okay, um, I'm not too familiar with FAI. Um, I think this is mostly to tackle um, uh, deployment. So th the problem we've been trying to solve here um, is, uh, well, let's consider our input. It's mostly uh, custom software and uh, Yopto recipes. And we want to turn this into um, a Debian image, and um, that, that's what we are doing with uh, with ITAR, yeah. And then we're just transitioning basically from using our you know, recipes and uh, and build everything from a source approach to uh, trying to leverage the Debian as much as possible and just build our own components. But once we have a Debian image, then we can use. Uh, all the existing tools in the ecosystem to, to, to deploy them. So that, that can be an FAI or, or all that tool that here. Okay, let's uh, go to the second question. How much is built from scratch when building a Debian image with ISA? Example, IME when building a regular OE or Yocto image, you have to download and build a lot of stuff from source. Yes, um, and that's that's again that, that's really great. Uh, because we get absolutely um, uh, you know absolute flexibility by doing that with uh, Open Embedded and, and Yocto. And um, there are situations just like the, the one we're facing where we don't need that. We just want to um, pick up the builds and also don't have um, all these dependencies that we uh, we have to build. And either uh, just leverages the packages that are provided by the um, um, Debian uh, package repository, repositories, and they are just pulled from there, so they are not built. So we end up actually building only the software that, uh, that we integrate, so only our custom software, or the um, you know, packages that we have to patch, or update, or anything that we customize. Everything else is pulled um, as it is provided by, by Debian, and is not built for it. Okay, Francois, our time is up. Thank you very much, Francois, for giving this talk. Thank you. Thank you.